there are a tremendous number of hidden aspects to Soho, places that people who live and work here will pass every day and never notice. It's my job to find out about them and to, to share them with people. My name's Pete Burton, and if you'd like, I'd love to show you the Soho that I love. The reason that I first got interested in Soho, I, I was born in South Africa actually, I came over here as a small kid and uh, met my grandparents at Piccadilly Circus, uh, they were staying at the Regent Palace Hotel, so we did all the, the hugs and kisses and stuff and then my granddad took me out to Piccadilly Circus and said this is the centre of the universe and coming from, coming from Africa it was very easy to believe this. Suddenly you're surrounded by bright lights, this big city throbbing, more people than I've ever seen before in my life. And then day by day, more culture than I'd ever experienced in my life. 80 theatres, the British Museum, Natural History Museum, the Victoria and Albert, the, everything that we've got in London. The diversity of people struck me as very odd when I first arrived in London. It's people from all over the world that I had not never seen before. Uh, languages that I'd never heard spoken the sheer vibrancy of the capital. Since then I've travelled and I've been around and I don't think anywhere anywhere else even comes close to the, to the diversity and the excitement and the energy of London. Soho has always been a bohemian part of London and a very accepting part of London. So naturally it would attract interesting little works of art and um, artistic expression like this and it appears that Westminster Borough Council's powers um, do not include the power to remove sculptures. There are various sculptures on the sides of buildings. There's very little painted street art, and I think that's partly because every borough has a different policy. Um, so in Westminster, there is a zero tolerance policy towards graffiti, any uh, painting, scratching, or drawing on a wall. Westminster's zero tolerance policy, though, can't really apply to sculpture because it's not drawing, painting, or scratching the surface. It's adding a sculpture, and I don't think lawmakers um, ever thought that anyone would go around fixing sculptures to the sides of buildings without the owner's permission. So in Soho we have plenty of examples of Invader. I mean, this probably is well known to Space Invader. His last uh, public exhibition in London was next door at the Outsiders Gallery. The way that he operates, as I understand, he's been doing this since 1998. He arrives in a city, and in London, 1998 was the first time, and invades it by putting up these little mosaic Invader creatures. He gives himself points for the prominence and the size of each piece. More recently we've got an artist called Dr. Cream who uh, has a harlequin figure who rolls himself up into a shell and if all of the pieces are viewed in an animation you can observe this little character rolling himself up into a shell. So there's various Dr. Creams dotted around. Rick Buckley is the artist of the noses. We didn't know a lot about the history um, of the noses until Rick Buckley gave this interview last year. And it was then that he said for the first time that he put these noses up as a protest against CCTV and the state becoming too nosy. I'd heard the legend that there were seven noses of Soho, and the legend is that if you manage to find all seven, you'll attain infinite wealth. And he dotted them up, not just in Soho, but elsewhere in London. So that was an interesting, that was a sort of firm point to work on. The number of noses is under dispute. There's, there's different claims somewhere in the 30s, up to 40 uh, noses could have been placed around London. Rick Buckley also said in the interview that he put them up on famous landmarks. Now, as you know from us walking around together, an awful lot of them are not on famous landmarks. They're on very nondescript uh, little businesses. One nose in particular attracted or a lot of myths developed. Uh, there's, a, there's one nose on a very famous London landmark that taxi drivers pass virtually every day. And taxi drivers, being what they are, they've got a fare in the back and the fare says, what's that? And points up at the nose. Rather than admit ignorance, they'd rather make up a good story. Um, so the stories that have developed around that particular nose were that it was Nelson's nose and it was rubbed for good luck, or Duke of Wellington's nose and it was rubbed for good luck, or it was Napoleon's nose and it was rubbed for, to show disrespect. There's also one which really throws people off the scent. It's the first one that most people discover, and it's a very large nose. But that was a homage to Rick Buckley that was put up in um, 2001, because most people will spot that one first and think, ah oh, right, now I know what I'm looking for and they'll go around Soho looking for seven noses about this size when they should be looking for seven about that size. 
Uh, once I'd found them all, I decided that I would launch a tour. I expected it to be of limited appeal and there to be a, a, you know, only a, a certain number of London nerds who would want to go on it. And I had to decide what I most wanted to do. So I looked back on my career and decided that the things that had given me most pleasure were bringing groups of young people up to London. Also my hobby and passion is studying the history of London and researching different elements of London. And I started to think of a job that could combine the bits that I'd most really enjoyed. Uh, and tour guiding seemed to be the perfect marriage. No spreadsheets, no Ofsted, meet nice people, a job that I absolutely love, a job that changes constantly, stretches me constantly because people will ask me to research the most bizarre things uh, and then it's up to me to research whether it's in Soho or anywhere in London. No, I enjoy research so I enjoy walking. I walk probably 50-60 miles a week um, and I love London and I've got a fabulous job.